Flying to a destination used to be a luxurious experience that was full of upgrades. Pretty much everything has changed. The boarding process, the amenities, and even the freebies. Flyers were offered a completely different experience from the moment they got to the airport. So let's take a look back at how flying the friendly skies has changed over the years. Until the jetway was invented, all passengers had to board airplanes by walking outside onto the tarmac and climbing a set of portable stairs. This was often inconvenient for travelers because of weather conditions and the ability to change flights quickly. The first jetway with a covered corridor was installed by Delta Airlines at Atlanta's Hartsfield Airport in May 1961, and American airports adopted them across the country. There was a time when smoking was acceptable in many public places, including airports. Airplanes were even equipped with ashtrays installed in armrests so that passengers could enjoy a cigarette during the flight. But when the Surgeon General started warning the public about the dangers of cigarettes, airports began to slowly restrict where passengers could smoke. When cigarettes were first banned on certain flights, the most congested area in the airport wasn't the baggage claim, but rather the first pedestal ashtray that passengers encountered as they exited the gate. Today, smoking restrictions at many airports are so tight that folks have to stand 20 feet or more outside the exit doors of the building. Rediscover your past by digitizing your family's memories with Legacy Box. Watch until the end of this video to find out more about preserving your legacy, and then visit LegacyBox.com recollection. Titan security after 9-11 now prevents friends and family members from walking to the gate to greet arriving passengers or to hug them tightly before they depart. Surprising someone when they landed by meeting them at the gate was something that many people remember fondly. Passing through the security checkpoint now requires a boarding pass, so the closest you can get is meeting them in the baggage claim area, which is a little less exciting. Watching airplanes take off and land was a free and exciting activity that a lot of kids enjoyed with their parents back in the day. So much so that almost every airport had an observation area outside the security checkpoint where the public could sit for hours to watch and even photograph the planes that flew in and out. Remember the wall of payphones you could find in every airport concourse? These were popular stops for travelers so they could update their friends and family or make a business call. There would be lines of people waiting their turn to make a call by inserting coins. But today, you would be hard pressed to find one of these in an airport. And that line you now see people standing in is most likely for a charging station. Through the 1950s and 60s, being an air hostess, or air stewardess, as it became known, was seen as a very elite career. But conditions to become a stewardess were very strict. Only young, unmarried females were accepted, and their overall appearance was very important. If you wanted to get married, you had to resign, and by the time you were 30, you had to retire. This was a time when the uniforms were very form-fitting, and they would often wear hats, high heels, and white gloves, so the glamour of flying was maintained. The barobed followers of Krishna handing out flowers while soliciting donations at every major airport was so common in the 1970s and 1980s that it was parodied in TV and movies. Tighter security combined with a ban imposed at Los Angeles International Airport eventually prevented the Hare Krishnas from approaching travelers as they tried to catch their flight. Back in the heyday of flying the friendly skies, airlines would generously hand out food to hungry travelers. Airline food served in coach was always something we complained about, but once it was gone, we instantly wanted it back. Today, you're lucky to get a free pack of peanuts or pretzels on a long flight. And don't get me started on the complimentary blanket and pillow.
For many years, there were kiosks at the airport with smiling personnel ready to sell you life insurance in order to take advantage of a nervous flyer. The pre-flight insurance business slowly fizzled out because air travel became more affordable and common, and people didn't view flying as a dangerous endeavor, and the insurance kiosks began to disappear. If your flight happened to be delayed and you didn't feel like reading, watching TV was one way to make the time pass quickly. Most airports had a section of TV chairs that featured coin-operated televisions, which would provide 30 minutes of local programming for 25 cents. Today, TVs are mounted pretty much everywhere, not to mention you can watch anything you want on your phone. Remember when flying on an airplane was considered a privilege and a special event? The whole family would dress up in their best clothes just to sit on a plane for a few hours. Men wore suits with ties, and women wore their best dresses, which was typical for flying during the 1950s and 1960s. As with other outings of the time, more time was spent on how we dressed before leaving the house, and flying was no different. Today, comfort is the way people fly, with sweatpants and slip-on shoes becoming the norm. If you've stuck around this long, don't worry, there's still more. But I wanted to let you know that we have some retro merchandise available too. Just click the link in the description to head on over to the store. Airlines such as Pan Am, United, and TWA began offering small carry-on bags emblazoned with their logos during the 1950s. These flight bags were sold through mail-order catalogs at airport stores, and sometimes they were even given out to first-class passengers and as promotional items for travel agencies. The flight bag was featured in airline advertising and promotions, and it became a status symbol for the new worldly traveler. These bags lasted into the 1980s, when demand fell, and airline cost-cutting measures basically eliminated them altogether. The days of flying the friendly skies and seeing open cockpit doors ended on 9-11. But the memories of watching the pilots and seeing the view out the cockpit window was one that mesmerized travelers. Although the doors are often open prior to takeoff due to flight and ground crew preparations, the doors today are secured for the duration of the flight. If a pilot does exit the cockpit during flight, there are now procedures that keep the flight deck secure, including blocking the aisle with the drink cart during those transitions. As with open cockpit doors during flight, it was also very common for children to experience visiting the flight deck during the flight. During the 1970s, 80s, and 90s, kids would be invited up to meet the pilots, shown the cockpit, and if they were lucky, don the captain's hat. They would also receive their flight wings, which were novelty pins that resembled the flight crews, but they were usually made of wood or plastic. These pins were often treasured mementos for children flying during the 20th century. One thing that you rarely see nowadays are airline sky caps located in front of the terminals. These were curbside baggage check-in locations that expedited checking in for a flight. Instead of waiting in a long line in the terminal, Skycaps made it quick and easy to check in as you pulled up to be dropped off. They also worked for tips only, and they would help you with luggage carts, wheelchairs, and strollers too. These can still be found occasionally, especially at larger airports in the U.S., but they are becoming another perk that is slowly disappearing. There was also a time when most airports around the country offered lockers that you could drop a quarter into to store your carry-on luggage so you didn't have to carry it around with you while you were in between flights. Travelers would often lock these things up as they headed to the bar, restaurant, or one of the many shops located in the airport. Today, these lockers have become few and far between with the increased security and the emphasis on keeping your luggage with you at all times. Airports even make announcements to not leave your suitcases unattended while waiting for your flight. So these lockers have been removed from many airports. Before the rise of the internet, Planning a flight and then purchasing tickets used to be much more complex, so travel agents were used to help in the process. Travel agents can still be found, but it's hard to find a brick-and-mortar business that allows you to walk in to plan a vacation. 
Today, independent travel agents work from home and plan more personalized trips, but the heyday for travel agencies ended when the travel websites, like Expedia, came onto the scene. The ability to purchase directly from the airline's website also made the need for travel agents obsolete. Pan American Airways was one of the most recognized airlines in the world. It was often considered the most luxurious to fly, and they would indeed pass out flight bags to elite passengers. Pan Am ruled the skies up until the 1970s, when deregulation increased competition and fuel prices skyrocketed. The iconic airline may have survived this, but the 1988 Lockerbie Scotland bombing really sealed their fate as the company folded in 1991. Before cell phones, apps, and QR codes, tickets used to look quite different. Paper tickets were printed for you and given to you in airline branded envelopes that kept everything organized. At first, they had these red carbon sheets that separated the various copies, and the ink would often be messy. Today, the use of printed tickets or even boarding passes has become outdated. So much so that some airlines will charge you extra to have them printed. Through the years, the seat sizes on airplanes have gotten smaller and smaller. During the golden age of flying, seats were large and spacious, and they had plenty of legroom to stretch out. This made it comfortable to fly, not to mention all the other extras like full meals, drinks, hot towels, and the little pillows to help you sleep. As airlines redesigned their planes to fit more and more passengers, the seats became narrower, and flying coach meant really getting to know the person next to you. One mesmerizing feature that used to display flight information at airports were the mechanical split-flap display boards. These boards announced arrivals and departures, and when they updated, the sounds of click-clacking grabbed everyone's attention. After technology improved, the mechanical ones were replaced with digital cascading sign boards, which could be updated using a computer, and displayed the flight information using a series of dots. Today, Large television monitors are used in place of some of these older technologies. The other iconic airline that could be found at airports across the country was TWA. Transworld Airlines had a storied history that began in the 1930s, and the airline really pioneered commercial passenger travel. TWA was the first to show in-flight movies way back in 1961, and they also opened the Transworld Flight Center at JFK Airport, which was, and still is, an icon in airport terminal design. By the 1980s, TWA was taken private, which led to massive amounts of debt and a bankruptcy filing. Then in 1996, TWA Flight 800 crashed, stressing the company even further, before they were acquired by American Airlines in 2001. Another novelty item that was passed out to passengers on flights were the free decks of cards that had the airline's logo on them. Often, these cards would be handed out to the kids, and they were meant to keep them busy while on the flight. This was before in-flight entertainment, and the decks of cards were one way to pass the time until you landed. They also became a way to chronicle your travels, with many people collecting them. Finally, prior to 2001, making your way through security at most airports was pretty easy. You would place your carry-on luggage on the conveyor belt, and then place your keys in a small bowl before you made your way through the metal detector. Passengers were not required to remove their shoes, which today makes passing through security a much longer process. Following a shoe bomb attempt on a flight that was headed to the U.S., the policy changed, and from that point on, shoes had to be scanned for explosive devices. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything else that makes air travel so different today.
Recollection Road and Legacy Box both believe it's important to preserve the past. If you're like me, there's a box of your family's treasured home movies and photos tucked away somewhere, and Legacy Box can help you preserve them digitally. The process is a simple and safe solution for converting your home movies and photos to thumb drive or to the cloud. Just send in your Legacy Box filled with old VHS and camcorder tapes, film reels, and pictures, and get back digital copies that can be easily enjoyed, shared, and kept organized. It's that easy. Legacy Box is trusted by over 1 million people, and it's all done right here in the USA. Get started preserving your past today. Go to LegacyBox.com slash recollection to get an incredible 55% off. Buy today to take advantage of this exclusive offer and send in your memories when you're ready. Go to LegacyBox.com slash recollection to save 55% while supplies last.